Praise the Lord, saints. This is uh, Deacon Gordon from Bethesda Temple Church of the Living God, where our pastor is Bishop Robert Allen Jr. I want to give honor to him and also to our Dwight Reed, our bishop. So, anyway, uh, presiding bishop. So, anyway, our lesson this week is Believers Praising God for September the 26th. <clears throat> um, the Blessing this week covers uh, scriptures from Acts, the second chapter, from ch uh, verse 32 to 47, of course, uh, 32 to 33, and then verses 37 through 47. <clears throat> this lesson basically is uh, given a description of how the saints will respond to receiving uh, the baptism in Jesus name and also receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost which is the gift obviously that God has given us to uh, to support us in our walk with him uh, that's him on the inside giving us inspiration and courage and likeness of him to display in our lives uh, obviously to be a witness to the world uh, we live in at this time. So anyway, this lesson, um, first of all, starts in Acts, the second chapter in verse 32. And it reads as, This same Jesus hath God raised up, whereof all we are all witnesses. And of course, the apostles were the witnesses. 33, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Lord of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has sent forth this which ye which ye now see and hear. And of course he's referencing the day of Pentecost as the apostle was given instructions to go to the upper room, and there was about a hundred and twenty of them there. And on the day of Pentecost, it appeared unto them as closing tongues and like a fire and it descended upon each of them. And they received the gift of the Holy Ghost on that day uh, in the upper room. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. And of course, the audience was uh, people from all, all nations around the earth at that time. And those people obviously saw what they uh, uh something that was going on which them speaking in all of their different languages by the spirit of god of course would that not pique the interest of those folk aren't all these uh galileans as they would say and now they hear us speaking in their own languages so that definitely got their attention amen all the nations who were observing this and of course, the Apostle Paul, at that point, when they heard this, they were astonished, obviously. And they asked them, men and brethren, what shall we do? Um, you know, what is this that we're observing is what they said at that point. Uh, they were really curious about what they were hearing, uh, those Galileans speaking in their own languages at that point. Uh, and then we skip down to verse 37 in this chapter and the verse 37 starts to read as this now when they heard this they were pricked in their hearts and said unto peter and to the other apostles men and brethren what shall we do then peter said unto them do what he said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost amen and 39 for the promises unto you and to your children and to all who are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call i want to pause right there because that includes every mankind on the earth amen jew and gentiles amen everybody who's not a jew is called a gentile in the earth amen and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Amen. In other words, God has given an answer for the sin that was committed in the in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Now men could come close to God. God is going to 
uh, reconcile us back to himself by his own spirit. God is coming to us to bring us back to him, amen, to live a life that's pleasing to him, amen. And then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So even that day when people's hearts were pricked and they heard the word of God, they responded to the word of God and were baptized and received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And what, what did they do after they got the gift of the Holy Ghost? What does it provide or what did it provide for them uh, in their spirits, in their hearts, in their minds? What did they do? Um, and they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. So those are the things that they did. They continued steadfastly in the teaching of the apostles. Amen. And they and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs was done of the apostles. See, when you receive, Jesus said, when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you receive power. Amen. Power. Amen. Authority is, is the term that you get out of power, and you have authority to speak the word of God, and things began to happen. Amen. Just as Jesus walked on the earth, and he spoke. Amen. And conditions were relieved. He gave those apostles that same power. Amen. From heaven. Amen. Himself dwelling on the entire side. Whatever you do in word or do, deed, he said in the scriptures, do all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so it said, and fear came upon every Every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were, were together and had all things common. Amen. They believed in their hearts that they were blessed now by the Holy Ghost to actually feel the need of other people. Amen. They could feel the need. They could discern the needs of other people. Amen. And it says, and sold their possessions and goods and part of them to all men, every man that had need. So everybody didn't have a need, but to those who had need, amen, they were able to supply their needs. They sold what they had to make sure that everybody had their needs met. And what are the needs right now that we have in this life? I mean, they're mental, physical and spiritually, those are our needs. Amen. They got the teaching that they need. They got the physical, the food, the things that they needed, food and shelter over their heads. They were able to get that because their fellow Christians at that time, by the gift of the Holy Ghost, had that discernment and had that uh, desire given to them by the gift of the Holy Ghost, God dwelling on the inside. So the same things that Jesus did when he approached many people in his earthly ministry, he supplied their needs, amen, whatever they came to him for. And many times they came to him for food and for shelter and for healing, amen. And then, uh, so we know that, that it was authorized by God for them to do just what they were doing, amen. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house and did eat meat and gladly with single, singleness of heart. Amen. They believed and they were together. Amen. When people get together in the body of Christ, we are to be helpers one of another. Amen. We're not to see someone in need and not help them. Amen. How do we have the goods by ourselves and not help them? And what else did they do? They praised God and have in favor with all the people and the Lord added. And the Lord added to the church daily that should be saved. And so when we live a life and show the love of Christ, how shall men know that you are my disciples? The Bible says it's by the love that we show one to another. So it's very important, amen, no matter what the circumstances are in our own personal lives, we're supposed to love one another, and amen, and that love is the love of God that shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, amen, not by something we manufacture, but by the love of that should be in our hearts by the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, how do we know we're filled with the Holy Ghost? And the fact is, your love is going to display that if you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And what we're supposed to do when we're not 
filled with the Holy Ghost or we see ourselves not caring about one another, we're supposed to stir up the gift. And how do you stir up the gift? Praying is how you stir up the gift. You separate yourself from this life and 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 pray to God, amen, sincerely, sing, with singleness of heart, and then he will answer your prayers, amen, and restore the joy of your salvation to you, amen. It's a gift, amen. God has given us the gift of the Holy Ghost, and he is the provider of strength when we need strength, amen. He is the provider of the encouragement when we need encouragement. So we got to bow, humble ourselves before him, and pray and God will answer our prayers. Amen. He's there to answer our prayers. He's there to for us to call on him. That's what prayer is. Uh, and to speak in another tongue is to block out all other existence in the earth and to be able to speak to God directly by the gift of the Holy Ghost is beautiful. Amen. There's nothing more beautiful than getting in the spirit, getting into the spirit of prayer and then having God anoint you and have you speak to him directly through the spirit of God. And he can answer us according to our needs because that's what he came to do. Amen. Now, one of the things that were displayed in verse 47 is they have, they found favor with all the people. They were sharing what they had with other people by the gift of the Holy Ghost. And what are some of these things that the church can add to other people and help other people with? One of the things that we can do is uh, we can have uh, a food shelter, amen. People need food, we can give people food. In individually, we can do that. You don't have to just do it through the church by the love of God. When you know somebody needs something, you can just provide it for them. And I see that in the ministry that we have. We have a lot of loving saints that when they see other saints in need, they come to their rescue and help them. Amen. Not to put any uh, pressure on themselves or to for clout for themselves. And a lot of times they do it secretly. Amen. And sometimes they get together as a group and do it. Amen. And God, that's why we have a group uh, uh attitude about what we do. We have a, a grouping on our phones and when, when somebody has a need for prayer, they'll put a message on the group texting and uh, we we all pray, amen. And that's a way for us to stay together. And when we go to church in the building together, amen, we can worship God together in one spirit, amen. And that builds up our faith as well to be in a, a congregation of people who are sharing what you share, the love of God, amen, in that atmosphere to God in praise and worship. And God says he dwells in the midst of praises, amen. So so there are many ways. Um, so what are some of the other things that we found out in the lesson? Here's what, uh, how should a person act once they get the Holy Ghost? And what, who, who is, has priority of doing things? And as our pastor has taught us, he's a man and so are we men and women. Amen. And once we get the Holy Ghost, God can work through any of us at any time in any place amen we are read the bible lets us know we are written epistles read of men but how do we become uh written epistles so that people can read us it's through the teaching that we receive and the character that we develop as christian people amen we want to and, and we, we don't show respect of persons right uh we don't go out and criticize people for what they look like or what they sound like, amen? We we love without dissemination, amen? We don't, we don't go out here looking at people and judging them according to how they look. So it's important that we have love in our hearts, love of God, which is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. It gives us the eyes of Jesus Christ, amen, to look on the world and to have mercy, amen? And God, when he saw the People uh, devastated without food, he had mercy upon them. Have them sit down, he said. You provide for them. And what did they say? We only have two fish and five loaves of bread. And he bowed his head and prayed and the, and the food increased. Now I'm not saying we're gonna get a miracle like that today, but when we pray, 
God would inspire us. And then we reach out to others. We all can work together to help those who are in need. Amen. And the need is lesser today than it was in that time as it relates to people in the earth. Amen. Around us today, there is plenty to be had. Amen. In the grocery stores, it's really close by us for groceries. Uh, a lot of us work. It's easy for us to, to get paychecks and then have extra that we can help others with. And, and what can churches do? We can provide food and we can also provide benevolence for people. Benevolence is an important word. Our alms is an important word in the church. We're able to share uh, with our thing. Alms is the ability to share. That's what that's all about. And uh, so we can do it with the physical things and we can do it from a spiritual standpoint when we pray as a group for one another. So let us continue down the pathway of of what God has uh, chosen us. See, God saved us from that day and time in our scriptures. See, we're those who were afar off. I was afar off when this was done. But God came to me directly to tell me I wasn't saved. Amen. So he, God is saving. God is the one who is calling people to be saved. Now, what we are supposed to do is have what Peter had was a word of God for them. The scripture. What does the scripture say? Amen. About salvation. And how are we to, to display that to people with love? Amen. We're not to constrain people to come into church. God should be calling people into the church. If you're out there and you're hearing the word of God repent to you, then that's that's an indication that God wants you to come into the church and to become his child. Amen. We all belong to him anyway. And so he's going to get out of us what he wants out of us one way or another uh, today or later on. He's going to get it. Amen. So we might as well bow now than bow later. Amen. I, I encourage you, amen, to bow now while you have an opportunity to bow to him and to hear his word and to, to be obedient to his word. His word is everything is going down, down but the word of God. And I'm a firm believer in the word of God. It's powerful. Is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder, amen. It can divide between the marrow and the bone, amen. That's in the word of God about us. In the earth, God created the earth and all of us belong to him, amen. And what we need to do is recognize that we don't control life and death. But it is in the power of your tongue to choose to stay whom you will serve. And Jesus has come that we might have life everlasting. That means when this, this mortal must put on um, immortality, amen, this, this, this mortal body has to put on another body. And it's the Holy Ghost in us that's going to create that other body for us. Jesus is going to come back for other of us. If we're alive, he's going to change us in the twinkling of an eye. If we're dead, he's going to raise them that are dead first. And then we that are alive will be caught up with them in the air to be with the Lord forever. I believe in this eternal life. Amen. I believe in the word of God. That's what we are. That's what we have to stand on. If if it's not, then I'm, I'm doing all of that I'm doing in vain. And I don't think I am because I have a lot of testimony uh, of how God has been blessing me for my 65 years of life. Amen. And I and not that I would have been saved all 65 years and not that I've not done everything right throughout all these 40 some years, but I know him and he knows me. And how does he know me? By the gift that he has given me, which is the Holy Ghost. And when I cry to him, he hears my cries. Amen. And he delivers me from all my fears. Amen. He's not given us the spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind. And so let us use what he's given us in our character, amen, to draw people to us. Be a written epistle read of men. And the way we do that by is displaying the character development through teaching in Jesus Christ, amen. Study the Bible, study the Bible, know what it says about you so that you can display what it is that Christ is telling you is 
ordered us to display through the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It will guide us into all truth and righteousness. Amen. So that's that's who we are. Amen. We're, we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away and behold, all things become new through the word of God that he's given us. Amen. He's provided for us what we need mentally, physically, and financially amen he's god is doing that amen he's supplying all of our needs according to his word amen philippians 4 19 god has not given us um actually a spirit of fear as i said it again but he's given us all things he's supplying all of our needs according to his word and just as sure as he's doing it in this life we expect him to do it in the next life that he has promised us eternally to be with him amen heaven is real i believe that amen i thank god for this opportunity that we've had to share in this christian education class amen and so what we want to do is go out and make it happen. Amen. Follow the spirit. Remember your own personal thoughts if you've gone through the lesson. And we are the believers who praise God. Amen. We praise him. Amen. We praise him in the good times and we praise him in the bad times. Amen. Um, and of course, you know, we're all going in and coming out of test all the time. So let us look to the hills from whence cometh our help for all our help cometh from God. Who, who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and we are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. So we want to listen to him, follow him and, and do and treat others the way we want to be treated as a Christian person. You treat people who are not Christian as though they are and you watch what happens to them. They're going to have a, they're going to desire to know what it is that makes you smile all the time, that makes you speak to them all the time, that gives you the courage to be nice to them even when they're not being nice to you now god bless you god keep you in jesus name i pray that this sunday school lesson has been encouraging to you and uh it's again it's believers praise god amen that's our that's our responsibility god bless you and keep you in jesus name amen